Hey, Nomadic Fanatic Eric here. I thought I would do a video and kind of explain some of the more realistic reasons for why I've chosen the RV life and maybe also talk a little bit about more of the real reasons why I chose to go back to college. But for starters, you know, as far as the RV life is concerned, I know I have several videos where I talk about all the pluses and awesome stuff about living in an RV as far as being able to boondock and no no rent and uh, being able to leave whenever you want to. Not, you know, if you don't get along with your neighbors or your roommates, you're not stuck in something. You can always just turn the key and go no matter what. You know, there's those obvious stuff. But for me, there's a lot more pressing issues at hand that I thought I would bring up. One of the big ones, besides not having to pay rent, and again, I understand that not paying rent, I still have to pay for RV maintenance and other repairs to my RV because it's kind of like being a homeowner and stuff like that. But um, I've never gotten along with roommates. So for me, it's almost like not an option. You know, I know I don't get along with roommates. I don't get along with neighbors either. So it kind of forces me into this situation. You know, pets. It's really hard to find apartments or houses for rent that allow pets. I mean, do a search on Craigslist right now for apartments that are available in Thurston County. You're going to get 600 replies. Now filter that out to places that, own, that allow pets. You're going to get down to like 12 total. And of those 12, they're like ridiculously priced, like over $1,200 a month for an apartment. So, you know, a lot of people would just say, well, Eric, get rid of your pets. Well, fuck you, you know. Um, no, I'm, I'm comfortable with my lifestyle, but I, there are certain restrictions that do make me lean towards the RV life. And besides roommates, you know, neighbors have always been a problem of mine too, believe it or not. I mean, I'm a really friendly person, but I have, I have very few neighbors that I have ever gotten along with. And maybe it's just like an Olympia slash Thurston County thing, but people around here are just snitches, rats, pieces of shit. They're not the talkative type of people, you know? If you're, if you're watching TV and your next door neighbor thinks it's too loud while she's trying to watch Wheel of Fortune or something, she's not going to come knock on your door like a normal person and be like, hey, I'm, I'm, I can hear your stuff through my walls. Would you mind turning it down a smidge? Yeah, she's not going to talk to you, not going to say a damn thing when she sees you out in the parking lot. She's going to pick up the phone and call the police, and the police are going to knock at your door. And the police are going to knock at your door and be like, hey, we're here because your piece of shit neighbor called and snitched you off. So... Just so you know, that's who did it. You know, it's like, well, fuck, you know? Yeah, people just are pieces of shit, you know? They have their, they let their dog out and they, their dog poops in your yard and they lie about it. And you take a, you know, you get them on camera with your camera pooping in your yard and then you go confront them and say, would you mind coming to pick up your dog's poop? And they said, that's not my dog's poop. Oh, really? Here, well, you, you might, you might, who's this? This is you with, with your, your leash, walking him into my yard and pooping in my yard. Anyway, yeah, so I've not gotten along with neighbors, and so the RV life suits me just fine. I've been single for almost four years now, and I don't really have any complaints. I'm really happy. I'm really in control of my life. I don't have any regrets, you know? But like I said, there's, there, there's a lot of certain stuff that makes it so that I'm kind of stuck in this situation, too, even though I love it. Now, I happen to lose jobs a lot, frequently. I'm only 32 years old. I consider myself a young man, but... I have had over 40, probably over 45 jobs in my short life so far. They just never last. You know, they're, irre they're re replace easily replaceable jobs. They're usually part-time and they pay the minimum wage. And the ones that seem really good are the ones that start off at full-time and then business starts to go down so everybody's hours starts dropping down until you're down to like 16 hours and you've got six people that are just basically starving it's like oh my god i just got this new apartment i'm in a lease blah 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 and every single person is just pissed off because nobody can get the work they can't even beg for the work to make the money and you get to the point where those six people are like look two of us are willing to just quit if you'll give the other four full time because this is ridiculous you know and you know i've been through so many of those stupid transitions where i have to move out of my house or apartment and i have to start selling stuff you know, and I don't just mean selling a few of the extra stuff, like my MacBook and, and my Tascam Porta Studio and stuff. I'm talking about selling everything to the fact that, you know, I'm living in a van at Walmart trying to find another job. And then I find another job, but because I haven't gotten a paycheck yet, it takes weeks before I have money to move into a new place. 
And then when I am able to move into another place, you know, I consider it like replaceable money, you know, or disposable money where it's okay, now I can just throw it away on rent since life is so much better now. But it's not that easy because I had gotten rid of everything to be able to live in the van. So now I don't, I don't, I don't own a microwave, coffee maker. I don't even have dishes anymore. So I have to start completely from scratch again. It's like that concept just has never made sense to me. It's this revolving door that I put myself through that's just ass backwards and makes no sense <laughs> so i would say transitioning has been really tough for me and i i hate the feeling of not being in control i've done it so many times however rvs when i start when i after i bought my first rv in 2010 it was a 79 toyota dolphin that's the first time in my life i actually felt like i was in control because I was, you know, I was in control. I was, uh, I was in control of the roof over my head. I owned it. And the stuff that was inside of it, I owned it. And that wasn't going to change, you know. Like, having an RV gave me this sense of security. And, of course, in the last four years, I've had lots of different RVs. I've tried them all out. I've had several Class C motorhomes. I've had a, a Class B van motorhome. I've also had two cargo vans that were con converted into campers. I had... Uh, a trailer that had to be towed by a buddy's truck. I had a truck with a cab over camper on top of it. And I've had a class A. I mean, I've I've had them all. <laughs> I've tried them all out. And class C motorhomes are definitely my favorite just because of the floor layout. And I like the way they look too. But um, it's really rewarding to for me to have that sense of control in my life where I feel like no matter what happens, my home is like, it's economy proof, you know, like no matter what happens outside, it's not really going to affect what I'm in control of here. Now, obviously, if jobs disappear or gasoline disappears or something or money for me just disappears, that's going to change things. I'm not going to start selling things in here for gas money. I won't be able to get propane and to be able to cook or you or keep my fridge on because I don't have propane won't be able to fire up the generator to use the microwave and stuff like that. Uh, I won't be able to move it. So that stuff, it'll restrict it, but I can still live in the RV. I can still try to be happy and I can, you know, I, I will still be in control no matter what bad circumstances happen out there. So the bottom line is, you know, I've, I've had to make these choices partly because I wanted to, but also partly because in my mind, there just wasn't an alternative for me, you know? And um, I guess it's kind of proof that I enjoy it because I keep doing it over and over. I keep trying it. I got to stop trading on Craigslist or, or selling and then get trying something new, you know. Um, I really like this motorhome. And like I, as you've, if you've watched my other videos, you've already seen, I've put a lot of work and well, money into this one so far to make it work for me. So hopefully that's incentive for me to keep this one. Um, Although I really just don't know what's going to happen down the road. And that brings me to the next thing about why I chose to go to college. Now, let me just be honest here. I, when somebody asked me why I went back to college after, after 10 years off, I probably have been in the past given much different answers, you know, like to my family and friends. Oh, I just you know, I got to that point in my life where I took some time off and then decided the right thing to do would be to get a degree and get a higher paying job. Well, that's, you know, a great statement. That's, that's actually not why I ended up going to, back to school at age 28. <laughs> the reason was because the jobs uh, disappeared. I was in Aberdeen. I was, at a, I was living in a van in a Walmart parking lot, and the engine blew up in the van. The van wouldn't move. It had my life in it. It had me and my cat. Our whole life was in that van. I had no job, no money, and no way to move the damn thing. And it was as close to a midlife crisis as I'd ever been with no options. Until someone told me that I should just go back to school, get financial aid, and get paid to get an education. Which, well, which isn't really the truth because actually I got, I'm taking out uh, loans. So I'm actually having, I have to pay a lot of this money back later on in life. But it seemed like a really good band-aid at the time. It seemed like a really good way to try something new, take up time, have money to be able to live and survive while I go through this transition. Well, 
Grace Harbor College turned out to be a lot of work. A lot of work. I had to work my butt off with homework and stuff, and I was rewarded for that work. I graduated with my AA with a 3.8 something GPA. I was a member of Phi Theta Kappa, honor roll, the president's list. <laughs> but I worked my ass off for it. And uh, I thought I was just going to get my associate's degree. And then I decided that I, I wasn't quite ready for the real world yet. So I added Evergreen to that. I applied to Evergreen and got in. They have like, what, a 98% acceptance rate or something like that. Evergreen's different. No, I don't want to say anything bad about Evergreen. Evergreen, my success is based on comparing me to the other students, as far as from an instructor's point of view. What I do is always, almost always, written in my evaluations on, is the best at this? Does this better than his peers? Is the only one I can count on for punctuality? You know, like, like that type of stuff. Finishes his work on time when others don't. And it's like... Like, I just find that theme reoccurring in Evergreen and every program I've taken so far is being compared to others, which isn't a bad thing because <laughs> because the students that go to Evergreen make anybody look good. Um, but at the same time, I, it's, it's, it's all I'm going to say. It's all I'm going to say. Ever, I, I got five months left before I get my bachelor's in media, and uh, life has to make a huge shift for me, you know? A huge shift. Things are really going to change. I'm going to graduate, like, uh, I think a, a day after my birthday. A day after my 33rd birthday. And uh, life has to go on. And, um... Oof, it's kind of scary thinking about it. But. Anyway, yeah. That's where I'm at right now. Alright, talk to you guys later.